Hello students, welcome to the next lecture of the differential equation. Today we will discuss about linear differential equation with constant coefficients. Myself, Dr. Gurk, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute. You can simply follow my YouTube channel, Dr. Harish Gurk, where you can find the various videos on this differential equation course. The last lecture was on how you can solve the second order differential equation when the one solution is known to you. Then you can find the second solution, which is the product of the first solution and the unknown that is a v which is calculated by here then once you will find the second solution then you can write the general solution in this manner make sure y1 and y2 both are my linearly independent solutions now in this lecture we will learn how you can find the general solution of the differential equation when no solution is given to you in advance no solution is given to you in advance like of this for example, here, the question is solve this differential equation. Clearly says that none of the solution is given to you. Make sure our lecture is of the constant coefficient. So look at that. 8 is my constant. 16 is constant. This is 1. This is a constant. Omega, that's here I consider as a constant. And each term, 4, minus 4, minus 1, all are my constants. So how we can solve such equations? That's a very simple lecture. So any of the differential equation that is of the nth order, which can be written like this way, where capital X is a function of the X only and A1, A2, An are my constants. Then this differential equation is said to be the linear differential equation of order N. Depending upon this nature of the X, if X is my zero, then we call as the homogeneous differential equation. Otherwise, we call as the non-homogeneous once you have the differential equation then the general solution is written like of this that is the sum of the two variables what is the yci this is the part of the complementary solutions ypi is nothing but the part of the particular integral this particular integral is totally dependent on the right hand side of this here that is of this x while the complementary part is the solutions of this portion what is the yi's as i discussed yi's are my linearly independent solutions and it is solved with the help of the homogeneous part what is the meaning firstly we will consider this equations only and put them as a zero we will solve this equation we will get as a y complementary function after that we will solve this x part called as the particular integral how you can solve this solution there are the two methods called as the method of undetermined variation of the method Whenever x is equal to 0, as clearly says that that is whenever there is no right hand side, then what is the value of the ypi? ypi will be 0. So once it will be 0, so it means y is nothing but my yci. That is there is no particular integral. Then the complementary function is itself be the general solution of the equation. So how you can solve this differential equation? That's very simple. I simply take the notations like d over dx is my operator this is my operator second derivative i call as a d square and so on i can substitute this value here so it will be df ny plus a1 d of n minus 1 of y plus so and a n of y is equal to x i can consider y as a common so it can be written as dn a1 dn minus 1 up to the a n is equal to x so this is the function of the d so i can consider this as a f of t for example how you can solve this we can simplify it consider the second order differential equation where p and q are constant so based on this notation i can write this value as d square y plus p of dy plus q of y is equal to zero so clearly say that i can take d square as a common p of d plus q of y is equal to zero here y is equal to 0 it means this is a homogeneous solution once this is a homogeneous then there is no pi particular integral now you can start with the auxiliary equation how you can take the auxiliary equation i can take m as a d so it is by m square and so on so which is a quadratic in m so all of you know that how you can solve this once you will solve you will get the two roots are there m1 and m2 based on this nature of the m1 and m2 it may be a real roots it may be a complex roots so depending on the nature we will consider three cases 
first one is when the roots are distinct when roots are real and equal and when roots are the complex number when roots are by distinct then you can find the general solution as c1 e raised to power m1x plus c2 e raised to power m2x if you consider the roots are same then again you can consider e raised to power m1x c2 because both are same so i consider as here so i can see c1 plus c2 of e raised to power m1x i consider this as a c so what is the meaning of that so clearly say that there is only one solution is given to you but for the second order we need the two solution c1 y1 c2 y2 but here is only one solution is known to you so once you know the one solution then you can apply this method you can find the second solution otherwise how you can solve that uh, the second method is you can simplify this value you can simplify it as of this manner e raised to power m1x is a common so you can write here as because there are the two roots so you can write c1 plus c2x c1 plus c2x we will see in the couple of example to explain more detail on the other hand when the roots are by complex number that is plus minus of here then you can write the roots as e raised to power real part and iota of this you can write as of c1 cos c2 sin or you can write here as c1 sin of beta x or c2 cos of beta x that's upon your choice so let's say we will explain this with the help of the numerical examples for example here you can see the coefficients are my constants so here the coefficients are my constant and none of the solution is given to you is the solution is given to you no so it means the method of the v is not applicable so firstly we can write the operator form like of the d square minus 5d here we can write the auxiliary equations here how you can solve them you can make them as a factor this and once you will solve you will get the answer as 2 and 3 both the rules are my real and distinct so the solutions are my c1 e raised to power 2x c2 e raised to power 3x where c1 and c2 are constants look for the second example you can write like this way write the auxiliary equations now you can factor them you can see m square as a common m minus 1 4 as a common m minus 1 so how you can see this is the m square minus 4 m minus 1 so what is the root are there this is a plus 1 plus 2 minus of 2 are there. now again see the roots are real and the distinct so the first part is my e raised to power 1x e raised to power 2x e raised to power minus 2x where c1 c2 and c3 are constant again you can see the coefficients are my constant so you can apply this method we can write the auxiliary equation as m square plus 8m plus 16 can you find the root of this so it can be written as plus 4m plus 4m plus 16 so what is that this is m m plus 4 4 m plus 4 is 0 so m plus 4 whole square is 0 what is the root are there minus 4 minus 4 now you can see roots are real but they are equal so how you write this solution is e raised to power minus 4x is common now there are the two roots are real so you can write c1 plus c2 x is the roots of the is the solution of this differential equation look at this you can write the auxiliary equation m square plus 4m plus 13 is 0 so can you find the solution of this there is no factor so you can use the discriminant rule this is b square minus 4ac divided by 2 so you can simplify it you will get this as here which is my complex number so once it's a complex number the roots are my e raised power alpha x c1 this plus of here so what is the alpha you can see alpha is my minus of 2 and c1 cos of 3x plus c2 sine of 3x so this is the required solution of this 
but uh, now you can see I can generalize these cases and then we will see more examples. What will happen if your auxiliary equations has the three equal roots? It means the differential equation is of the third order. So how you can write this solution of them? Now all the roots are same, so I can write m1x as the outside. Now it has of the three roots, so I can write as a c1, c2x plus c3 x can because if it is of third order then there are the three arbitrary constants here if the roots are like this way you can see there are the two equal roots and the one is that different so firstly we will think about here i can written like of this manner this is c1 plus c2x and this is my different so i can consider c3 e raised to power m2x if my roots are here, you can see these are my different roots. So corresponding to this, I can written as y is equal to c1 e raised to power m1x, c2 e raised to power m2x. But here you can see the complex number which are repeated in sign. But in corresponding to complex number, the roots are my here. You can write the general solution in this form. But here, you can see this is the repetition are there. So it means instead of the C1 and C2, you have to write in terms of the polynomial because there are the two repetitions. You can write here as of this while rest of the sin are similar. Look at some more example based on this. How you write the auxiliary equation of this? So it is m square minus m is equal to 0. So can you find the roots of this? This is 0, 1, which are the real and distinct so corresponding to this you can written as a e raised to power 0 corresponding to this you can write as a here and this e raised to power 0 is nothing but my 1 you can written like of here corresponding to this how you write the auxiliary equation this way can you find the value of the m it is plus minus of omega iota now which is a complex number so i what is that if you compare them here what is the alpha? Alpha is 0, beta is my omega. So you can write the solution as e raised to power alpha x, c1 of them. e raised to power 0 is my 1, and you can write the solution as here. Now you can see here, so you can write the auxiliary equation this. Make sure in this case m is my d by dz. So capital D is my of this. Right? So what is the auxiliary, these are the roots, these are the complex numbers. So what is the solution of this? e raised to power alpha. I can return this number as of this form. So now here this is the independent variable is my z. So I can return here as a z. c1 cos root 3 by 2 of z plus c2 sine root 3 over 2 z. So remember that this independent variable is z. Look at the one more example. This is a complex form. There is a power of 4. You can write the auxiliary equations here. It is not possible to write the factor of this. So how you can solve that? You can check firstly whether m is equal to 1 is the root of this or not. You can see minus 23 plus 12 plus 36. So you can see 0. It is minus 12 plus 36 which is not 0. It means 1 is not the root of this. Check whether 1 is equal to minus 1 is the root of this or not. So it's a plus 4. Again it's a plus 4. Minus of 23. Minus of 12. Plus of 36 is here. So this is the 8. Again clearly say that it is non-zero. So m is equal to minus 1 is also not the root of this equation. You can check m is equal to 2. Because we can see how you can check either you can start like of this manner you can start like this way you can see this will be satisfied but the another method is you can write this table this is the power 4 this is the coefficient of the m raised power 4 m raised power cube m square m constant what is the coefficient of the m4 4, 4 minus 4 minus 23 and so on now you have to check whether 2 is the root of this now you can write 2 here the first value you can return as such. Multiply 2, 4, 8. You can write multiply here. This is my plus 4. Minus 4 plus 8. 2 multiply 4 is again 8. 
it is by minus of 15 multiply this by this it's minus of 30 it's plus of minus of 18 it's plus of minus 36 so it will be cancel out if the last part will be cancel out it means 2 is the root of the equation otherwise you can also verify that whether 1 is the root of this or not you can see I can return as a 4 it is 4 0 0 into 1 0 minus 23 23 of this it is my minus of 11 minus of 11 is here you can see it can never be 0 so it means 1 is not a root of this so once you can see here it will be 0 so 2 is the root of this once you know that 2 of the root of this you can divide this here by m minus 2 but I will tell you again the shortcut trick there is no need to divide them what is that this the last part is my constant this is my m coefficient of the m this is m square this is my m cube so you can write this number as 4 m cube plus 4 m square minus 15 m minus of 18 is 0 it means when you divide this equation by m minus 2 you will get this as a expression again you can see it is not possible to write the factor of this again check whether m is equal to 1 is the root of this there is no m is equal to minus 1 no check whether 2 is the root of this or not again so i can return as 4 8 12 it's a 24 it's a plus 9 it's a plus 18 you can see the last part will be cancel out so it means yes 2 is also the root of this equation so we can solve this here so now the last part is again this is a constant this is the m this is the m square so my roots are here 4m square 12m plus 9 now this is the quadratic you can easily solve this the factor r that is a 36 and 12 you can simply say 6 and 6 so it's a 4 one root is my 2 second is my 2 third fourth are my here now how you can write the solution these are the repetitions so you can return as c1 plus c2x of e raised to power 2x again there is a repetition so you can write it as c3 plus c4x of minus 3 by 2x is the solution of this differential equation so these nine questions are exercise for you you can try it yourself and you can verify your answers with the help of here check whether these all nine questions are applicable or not we will see the next lecture when the coefficients are my not a uh, constant remember this in all these example the coefficients are my constants so you have to apply this method now next lecture we will see how you can solve this problem when coefficients are not a uh, constant till then you can simply follow my youtube channel playlist mathematics 2 where you can find all those previous years uh, previous lectures on this differential equations are here i hope you can like share comment this one best of luck students happy learning.